Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I'm making a birthday card using the Heartfelt Creations Clear Cardstock. This is much thicker than a transparency is, so you can actually make card bases from it. And I'm using the 8.5 by 11. It also comes in 12 by 12. I'm cutting it down the middle at four and a quarter to give me two card bases out of it. So I'm cutting a standard A2 size card, and I'm going to score it in the middle at five and a half. So my card will end up being five and a half by four and a quarter. So I'm just, like I said, scoring it and now really pressing it down with my bone folder. And this holds up really nice. I am running it through my Sizzix Big Shot with an embossing folder. And I'm using the Sizzix Sandwich Book just as a quick reference to see which sandwich I need. And I'm going to just sandwich the front of my card base. So I'm just going to lay it in the embossing folder. It won't get the very top, but I'm not worried about it because I plan on putting a frame of paper. And now I'm running it through back and forth, and this is gonna give me a really deep impression. I'm using a dots folder. So now I'm pulling out the Spellbinder Celebrations pierced rectangle set, and I'm using the largest and second largest rectangle in there, and I'm also using a stitched die to go in the middle of it. So I'm choosing some paper from the Spellbinder Celebrations 12 by 12 assorted cardstock. This is beautiful cardstock. I love the colors and they all coordinate together. So I'm just cutting out a scrap or a piece so I can run it through my Big Shot. And now I'm going to line them, them up with the piercing in the middle of my frame. So once I have them lined up, I'm adding some scotch tape and I will run it through my Big Shot. And this gives me a perfect card front frame, which will then still allow a tiny border of the clear cardstock to show. And look how pretty that pierced detail is. So off camera, I end up cutting two of the blue pieces out and two more white pieces that we will be sandwiching on the card. So the trick of these clear cards is when you glue something on from the back side, you'll be able to see the glue. So you just want to sandwich things together, which I'll show you here in a moment. But I cut out two pieces of the balloon for the very back of my card. And then I cut a pink and yellow for the front of my card, a pink and yellow for um, two more pink and yellows for the inside of my card. And I did write them down because they are not perfectly symmetrical. So they're a little bit off. So I wrote, wrote on the back of them so I, I would remember which way that they are to be glued on. So I used Angel Craft tape and adhered all the tape to, to the back of my frames. And now I'm using my ATG gun to the back of my balloons. And at first I was going to have my card hang over, but I remembered that the frame doesn't go all the way to the end of my card. So I'm going to add my frame first by just taking off the release paper from just part of that frame. I'll get my balloon in place, and then once I'm happy with that, I'll go back and remove the rest of the tape backing. That's a great way to get a frame or a piece of paper centered on a page exactly how you want. So now I'm going to use this yellow balloon as well and some baker's twine. First, I'm going to sandwich the back part of that balloon. That way you don't see that ugly adhesive. And I chose instead of making it pink, the big balloon pink in the back, I chose to do it the opposite, the yellow balloon being larger. So I'm adding my tape to my little balloon and I decided I wanted to run it through with that same embossing folder. So I just added it to a non-stick piece of paper that I had since I had already adhered my glue to it and then ran it through and that way it, I didn't have to worry about it sticking. And now I'm just going to continue by sandwiching my balloons back to back. This is going to be for the very back of my card so I'm adding a handmade stamp, handmade just for you stamp. And I used some VersaFine Black Onyx ink, hit it with my heat gun just so I didn't smear it as I was working with it and then adhered that to the very back of my card. Again, I'm just measuring my card perfectly. I cut these balloons from my Cameo. If you had a die, that would be easy to use. I did um, have to mirror them because they're not perfectly 
symmetrical like I stated. So now I'm adding the frame to the back of my card and again this hides all the adhesive that you would normally see. So I just lifted up the end of the balloons. I'm adding some Baker's twine, some divine twine from Wild Orchid Crafts, tying it into a bow and then cutting off the extra. On that pink balloon, the bottom part of the bow didn't want to stick down, so I used some glossy accents and then just pressed it down and let it dry. So for the sentiment on my card, I'm using a Spellbinders Delight Sentiments 3 die. I'll have all of these listed on Cut at Home's blog, and it's a very intricate die. It says, Happy Birthday. I'm using my piercing tool and removing it from the back of the die. And I end up cutting two of these out because I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm just being careful removing it from my die, making sure I don't rip it. And I'm using a little bit of Scotch Quick Dry. And what I do is I do the word happy first, get that adhered where I want it, make sure that it's lining up perfectly. Then I'll go back do the word birth, and then I'll go back and do the word day. This way I don't have to worry about my glue drying too quickly in between. And I made sure to save the dots for the eye as well, and I'm gluing those together. Those little tweezer be tweezers really come in handy when you're working with small items like that. So now I'm adding a little bit of glue. I'm not going to worry about it showing through because of the embossing. You don't end up really seeing it and I don't mind how it looks from the inside. So I just attach that and put some acrylic blocks on it to let it dry for a little bit. And now I'm using a Uniball Signo white gel pen and my ruler to just go around the edges right in front of that pierced detail. I'm adding a white border, which I think ended up looking really great on the card. And now using some Wink of Stella, I'm adding that to the large pink balloon. It gives it just a perfect amount of shimmer. And it dries very quickly. I hope that picks up in the camera to show you. It's just a, a just enough shimmer. And now lastly, I'm adding a few enamel dots to the front. So the inside balloons that I sandwiched will be the spot for my greeting to go. And being that this is an A2 size card, it'll fit in a standard envelope. So I hope you've enjoyed today's project. Please check out Cut at Home's blog. I'll have all the information and products used listed there. Thanks so much for watching.